Hi everyone, we are learning Daf Mem Aleph of Masechet Gitin. I am making this video from Camp Rama in New England, which is a special place where I am here all summer, so it's really nice to be talking to you from, uh, from the U.S., from camp. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Mishnah. Uh, I think it's a remarkable Mishnah. The Mishnah deals with a person who is half a slave and half free, and there are a lot of uh, sugiot, passages in the Gemara, that talk about a person who is half slave and half free. Uh, as I said several times in the commentary, I think that this shows us not that it was so common to have slaves that were half free, half slaves. I suppose it's possible, but I'm not convinced that it was all that common. I think the rabbis are interested in it because they're interested in in-between statuses. Uh, they're interested in complicated uh, problems. A person who is a slave is a slave. A person's free is free. What to do with a person who's half slave, half free? As we can see in the Mishnah, uh, the uh, problem of work isn't such a problem, as Beit Shammai says. Tikantem et rabo ved atzmogo tikantem. You have arranged matters for the master. You figured out the work situation, but you have not figured out how to deal with this fact that this person cannot get married. Uh, and I think that what I, what, the way I would read this Mishnah, more than the practical issue of how does a person who's half free, half slave get married, solving a practical problem, this is the, um, the way I, the, I see the rabbis expressing their worldview. The fact that this Mishnah is one of the rare instances in which Beit Hillel changes his mind, the way I would read that is something like this. Beit Hillel is correct in a sense, right? There is a possibility, no real problem. A person can be a slave and a free person at the same time, half slave, half free. But Beit Shammai points out that like, this is not a good solution that fulfills our highest ideals. And by the Mishnah bringing in this, Beit Shammai says this, Beit Hillel changes their mind. It's almost as if we get to see everybody holds this. Everybody, Beit Shammai and eventually Beit Hillel, are so convinced by Beit Shammai's logic that we have to make sure that everybody has the possibility to procreate, that we uh, force the master to free his slave, which we're going to see later on. Some rabbis consider that problematic. Uh, but again, what I'm trying to say is that more than a law, this Mishnah expresses a very strong statement that in rabbinic thought, Procreation is one of the most important mitzvot. I think it goes up there with Talmud Torah, the study of Torah, as being at the highest level in the pantheon of, um, of, rabbinic, of rabbinic understanding of mitzvot. And this Mishnah is the way I see uh, the rabbis illustrating that through this dispute between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel.